Welcome to Pro Talk with the Mighty Oba with our NFL insider, my main man, George Radney from the Challenger Community News. We're going to talk about what happened in the NFL this week. The hometown team, the Buffalo Bills, probably played the game of the week against the Baltimore Ravens, but came up on the short end of the stick and lost 24 to 17. George, how you doing? Hey, all right. Welcome, Mighty Oba. All right, I'm ready for another week. Here we go. All right, towards the end, I want all of you to get your pens and pencils out as we go through the betting line uh, with George. We're going to talk about the upcoming games, but first we're going to review uh, the games from last week. And the games from last week, of course, let's start uh, with the Buffalo Bills and Baltimore Ravens. What, what happened to the Buffalo Bills in this contest? Same thing that happened to them against New England. They uh, ran up against a very good football team. Now, this is a, these are the legitimate, really good teams of the NFL. And once again, our quarterback position let us down. Uh, the, the Josh Allen just that has no touch on the ball. He throws the ball way too hard. Uh, Cole Beasley was open. He couldn't hit him because the ball bounced off of Cole Beasley's hands. He threw one in the flat to, to Devon Singletary that Devon Singletary dropped. And he dropped it because he threw it too hard. He threw it low, and it was too hard. You can't, you can't throw the ball that hard. You got to have some touch. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. First series of the game, he missed John Brown on the deep ball. John Brown still couldn't find the ball. The defensive back had to tell him where the ball landed. Wow. Yeah, he, he's just so inaccurate. It's um, it's, it's mind boggling how inaccurate this guy is. Now, George, let me ask you this: uh, We went in the Ravens' locker room. And uh, they were talking about uh, their strategy of press coverage against our small receivers. Uh, do you think that exposed uh, John Brown against press coverage? It seemed that him and uh, Cole Beasley struggled against press coverage. Yes, yes. They, they, they were physical. They're a physical football team. They got physical with the, with the Smurfs. I call them the Smurfs. They just easily bumped them out off their routes. And when they, when they moved Marcus Peters, on to the cover of John Brown, that was the end of John Brown because John Brown was taking advantage of Marlon Humphreys early in the game. But when they made that defensive switch, that was that was it for John Brown. And, you know, I, what can you say about our defense? I, I, I don't understand uh, why a lot of them ran out of the locker room, including my main man, Shaq Lawson. I thought Shaq played his best game. <laughs> you. <laughs> But they don't like to talk after a loss. They run out of the locker room. I don't understand why. I, I don't understand either. The guys played hard. They played enthusiastically. And they, they're very confident. They can beat anybody. It's just that they don't have a quarterback. And once again, that falls back on your general manager that he doesn't have a backup, quality backup to pull Allen and, and get somebody else in there who can who can make jumpstart the offense, at least get you a, a key touchdown or in field goal, field goal range to win a game. Do you, do you really think that they would pull Josh Allen? You, I think they've they've hung their hats on this kid, man. I, I think if if Josh fails, they they're going to fail. And that's ignorant. That's just, that's not how you win football games. You you go to the next man and see if he can try and do something cuz Josh Allen, he wasn't going to win you that game. Uh, he got you down there. You got that touchdown late in the game because of penalties. They called three or four penalties in a row on the Ravens. And uh, Josh Allen, he just can't win you a game, a big game against a good team. That's what it comes down to. Now, what's happened with him and Ro he, Robert Foster has been open the last three games. I even talked to him today. I said, I, we were amazed that you came back from that hamstring injury. Uh, but it seems that Josh cannot get, he can't hit Robert Foster on the long ball. And Robert has been open two or three times. Yeah, he's throwing the ball so badly that the guys can't. The, the receivers don't even see where the ball is at. That's how bad it's getting with Josh, with Josh Allen. Josh Allen, it does it throws a. He just throws it deep, and and he doesn't even throw it close to the receiver. It, as soon as it leaves his hands, you see it's going in a different direction than the receiver. Mm. Well, let's review uh, the rest of the NFL. Uh, the week started. Uh, the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys once again look terrible against uh, the Chicago Bears lost that game 31 to 24 but believe it or not they're still in the NFC East race yes they are Eagles are in there against them yep and also the Atlanta Falcons 
uh, defeated the Carolina Panthers. Our guy Perry Fuel is the interim coach uh, for the Carolina Panthers, but he did not have a good outing. And it looks like the rumors are starting to fly uh, that Carolina is looking for a big trade of Cam Newton, who's about to have foot surgery uh, probably in the next couple of days. So uh, the the injury bug is just on Cam Newton. He's got a bad Liz Frank injury on that foot and looks like that uh, him and the uh, Carolina Panthers could be part in company. And that's what happens when you when you say you're Superman and you're running through a brick wall. When you run through a brick wall, you're going to have some injuries. And that's what he was doing his first uh, four or five years in the league, just running over people. But then they started hitting him and started knocking him back. And now he, he done had his shoulder operated on twice. Now he done had his foot. This is This is from not sliding, not going out of bounds, getting that ego, that big ego of being Superman. And like you said, I think you said it on the uh, on the show last week, that ever since the Super Bowl 50 out in uh, Clear, Santa Clara, California, when he didn't turn around to try to dive on that fumble, he's been, he's, he's been, he, he hasn't been the same ever since that play. Right, right. Definitely not. All right, the Cleveland Browns defeated the hapless Cincinnati Bengals who have been the beneficiary of conversation this week. People think that the New England Patriots uh, was trying to spy on a team that's 1-12 in from the, from the press box, George. Will you tell people, uh, if you're going to spy on a team, I'm not going to send a film crew up to the press box. No, you're not. You're not going <laughs> to send a film crew up to the press box. But I think, of course, when they sent the film crew, uh, the, the the people told, asked about it, and uh, the thing about it, I don't understand. If Cleveland gonna give them the okay for them to, to have credentials, they should at least mention it to the other team, to the Bengals and the other team involved, that they are gonna have a camera, because that's rare that you don't see a camera up in the press box. Very rarely, you, you very, very rarely. rarely you see that, and uh, obviously, uh, you know, I guess it was some sort of uh, production. Uh, that had nothing to do uh, with the day-to-day operations of, of any of the football teams, uh, including the New England Patriots, who were part of it, but it was not the day-to-day operation type of film. So I, I, I really, you know, I had somebody ask me today, I said, I really don't think Belichick needs to spy on a 1-12 uh, Cincinnati Bengal team. Uh, no, I don't, <laughs> I don't think so either. And I think that's, that's just because it's New England and they uh, they wanted to, Cleveland wanted to be up on it, and they uh, and Cincinnati just said, "Hey, what's going on?" And, and, and filed the charge. And you, yeah, and you know good well he could care less about Cincinnati. Get get ready for them and go out and play them, especially after losing to Kansas City uh, Sunday afternoon. They're gonna be real ready to play uh, this week. Now the Green Bay Packers are playing well. <laughs> I know they played a struggling Washington professional uh, football team, but they did win that game twenty to fifteen. Uh, the Packers are are vying for home field advantage throughout the playoffs, and that could be a key factor for them, isn't it? Very dangerous team. There's a lot of dangerous teams in that NFC. Uh, Green Bay playing at home, playing outside on that frozen tundra. That uh, Minnesota would be ready for them there. But the teams like New Orleans and San Francisco coming there, that could be very treacherous for those two teams. Now the Minnesota Vikings <laughs> defeated the hapless uh, Detroit Lions, who decided to uh, fire uh, Jim Caldwell, who, who led them to the playoffs. His last year, he was 9-7. and seven. Uh, They decided to fire, them, fire him and bring in Matt Patricia, who is now 3-9-1. and one. Uh, They lost to the Minnesota Vikings, who are 9-4, and four, right in the thick of things, 20-7. Uh, to seven. How do you see that Minnesota Vikings team? I, I think I, I had a feeling last year when, when uh, Kirk Cousins played so poorly for them last year, I said, you give him the off season, work with those same receivers and work for them. They would be much better this year. But then when he came out the gate slow again and not throwing the ball to these receivers and they ended up going public with it, the two right receivers talked about him so bad that he, he came out and apologized in the media to the receivers. And you can see ever since then, uh, Kirk Cousins, they, the light then went off, the light switch then went off. He's playing his best football right now. And uh, tell you what, Minnesota, keep an eye on them. They're they're another team that, I mean, they, you got about five teams that can that can make the Super legitimately Absolutely. make the Super Bowl from the NFC, and Minnesota is definitely one of them. Definitely one of them. They've got a very good defense, and they have some excellent offensive weapons. Well, the game of the week, 
Uh, I don't know what your over and under was, but I know it was over. <laughs> with yeah, the, it was <laughs> San it was, Francisco it was, 49ers and the New Orleans Saints. It was 47, and it was made at halftime. I think I mentioned it to you during the during the game when I saw it on the board. I said, "Oh my God, they they are, they, they had 48 points at halftime, so they they done made the over already." So that was a heck of a game. Both teams defenses just didn't show up for whatever reason. And you have that. When you play 16 games, you get tired, you're traveling. Remember, San Francisco went back home and then came back early on a Friday to New Orleans. Uh, and, and they this, and it was just, you know, you, you're going to have a down game. That, that's what it is. It, it's going to happen. Your offense, your defense is going to get tired sooner or later. And they both seem to be tired uh, in that game. And one thing I noticed, Marcus Davenport, he hurt his foot in that game. Now they, they say he's out for the year. He's going to have to have surgery. And that's a big loss on the defensive line uh, for the uh, defensive end for the uh, New Orleans Saints. Absolutely. Uh, they, there's some injuries that came out of that game on both sides of the ball. And uh, that could hurt a lot of these teams uh, coming down the stretch. Usually health does play a role. And one thing about the Buffalo Bills, uh, health is uh, one of the things that are on their side coming down the stretch this year. Um, yeah, and one one thing, Amadio, uh, about the Bills, if they, if things go the way I think they're going to go with the next two games and then the last game, I, I would definitely bring in the quarterback uh, back next year to push uh, our guy. He he got to get pushed. Absolutely, he should be. Competition is the reason that you're out there when you anoint someone as the starter and hang your hat on them. I th- I think it just puts you in a bad position. And uh, Matt Barkley. Uh, he is your backup. I, you know, if the guy's stinking it up, you, he's supposed to be able to be the one you throw in. But we don't right. know uh, if he's any better. Uh, how about the uh, New York Jets, man? They're surging. Uh, they're five and eight. Or yeah. Five, yeah, five and eight and twenty-two to twenty-one over your Dolphins, uh, who are three and ten. But we know the Jets do have some talent. They've got a lot of injuries, also. They do. They they have a lot of guys. If they don't call it quits, which I don't think they are, I think with Le'Veon Bell being out last Sunday, that that rev and, and it was obvious. Adam Gates should be fired because just because Adam Gates doesn't like Le'Veon Bell, he didn't want to pay that kind of money. He doesn't believe in paying that kind of money for a running back. And you saw what he did in New Orleans. He he, he traded uh, Drake Kenyon Drake, and he traded. Uh, 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 a jai to 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 the Eagles, and a jai ended up helping the Eagles win the Super Bowl that year two and years you ago. Mean, uh, when he was with uh, Miami, when he was with Miami, Adam yeah. Gates, yes, Adam Gates when he was with Miami, he traded uh, both a uh, both starting high quality running backs. He traded them when he was with Miami, and I think he wants to trade this guy because there's no reason he's not giving them the ball. He's not giving Le'Veon the Bell the ball, and it's a shame that you, uh, he he's he's almost as. Uh, I mean, you can't say anything nice about Adam Gates. He doesn't know what he's doing. He has a big ego. Somebody told him he know what he know. He doesn't know much of anything about being a head coach in the National Football League. Right. He's just a coordinator with a head coach title. I don't know how good of a coordinator he is uh, when he was with Denver uh, that he won all his acclaim. He had a, a, a decent Peyton Manning before he hit the wall, you know. Yeah, yeah, but but you don't trade ta- you don't get rid of talent, and he does that everywhere he goes. He gets rid of the talent. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I think uh, Le'Veon Bell uh, has not been playing because of the flu, and that usually tells you the running back isn't happy. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. He is a, well, he has just he has spoke out two weeks ago about not getting the ball. He said he said because wait, wait, they asked him why you you got the worst average ever in your career. Right. He said, well, I'm not getting the ball. If you give me the ball, my average wouldn't be this low. You see what I can do if I get the ball? And they said, why aren't you getting the ball? Well, you got to ask the head coach. You got to ask the offense coordinator. I don't, I don't. That's not my job to to come out here and talk about why I'm not getting the ball. You got to ask them. So that this been brewing for the last two three weeks. Right. All right, let's move on to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers uh, defeated the Indianapolis Colts. Jameis Winston threw for 456 yards. Now, wow. did our guy Jared Bell realize that this guy is the second leading passer in the NFL when we talked to him a couple weeks ago? No, he was just having a little coffee. I guess he, he just, <laughs> that caffeine went to his head there, and he didn't, uh, he didn't, he didn't uh, realize that. Jameis Winston has put up numbers like that, but he does lead the league in interceptions uh, as well. Right, right, right. He's got to he's got to take care of that football, but 
456 yards. That's pretty amazing for a quarterback in production rise, right? And, and Manuel, but think about it. Why is every the media, the national media, focusing only on his interceptions and not focusing on the numbers he's putting up overall? <clears throat> I think you're, you're uh, seven out of the 20 top quarterbacks in the league this year are African American, and uh, yes, they are. Uh, that is a first. Uh, uh, the top two are African American. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I is that a reason? Uh, we need to ask. We need to find out. But I think Jameis Winston, if you look at his numbers outside of the interceptions, which are a problem, uh, but his numbers, he has been a very productive passer this year. But it's so much so people are asking, should they, you know, we had a question last week on the radio show, uh, should they bring him back? I'm like, well, God, he's the second best passer in football. To me. Why why wouldn't you bring him back? I mean, Josh Allen's 19. (laughs) Yeah, and can't can't throw the deep ball, can't complete anything deep. And and, and you're talking about bringing that. And and keep in mind, he was drafted at number seven, and you had a guy drafted at number 32, just outshine you. He only threw for 145 yards, but one of them was a 61-yard touchdown pass. And he had a quad injury. A lot of people didn't know that, but uh, Lamar Jackson has a little bit of a quad injury uh, coming into a very cold environment. I'm sure uh, they had to probably keep him as warm as possible throughout that game. Exactly, and I would if I'm the Baltimore Ravens after uh, after their next game, the Thursday night game, I would I would think about sitting him down for the next two weeks. And Absolutely, let, let, I mean, RG three yeah. get some uh, get some reps. And yeah, I, I think it's definitely something to think about. I'd rather have him healthy going into the playoffs rather than uh, dealing with a type of nagging injury. All right, the, your yeah. your boys, the Denver Broncos, man, you you've always said they got a good team. Uh, they beat the Houston Texans, who just can't seem to get on a roll. They they win the big games, they beat the New England Patriots, and then come back and lose to the Denver Broncos. And see, that's where Bill O'Brien sh- keeps showing you year after year after year. All the years he's been down there in Houston, it's the same story. No matter who the team is, no matter how poor the, the team he's playing against, he always his teams always play down to his opponent. They always play down to their opponent, and they barely win, or they pull it out near the end of the game. Uh, but they made so many mistakes early in that game, with Denver being a, a nine to eight point uh, favorite, depending on where you were looking at. Uh, Denver, were, they didn't even need eight or nine points. They ended up beating them by almost about 10, 14 points, and that's that's rare for an underdog to just beat uh, a, a heavily favored team at home, uh, beat them that badly. And we need to move quickly. Uh, the Los Angeles Chargers defeated uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Jaguars, I think Doug Marone is going to be looking for a job. Uh, oh, they, yeah. They beat the uh, Jacksonville Jaguars 45-10. to 10. Uh, The Tennessee Titans defeated the Raiders 42-21. to 21. Uh, Titans have played well coming down the stretch. They're uh-huh. still in the thick of things since they uh, benched uh, Mariota. Looks like yeah. Ryan Tannehill has ignited that team. Uh, and they're right back in the thick of things. Uh, the Pittsburgh Steelers defeated the Cardinals. That's the next Bills opponent. And we have the uh, Los Angeles Rams. Uh, that game was surprising. I thought the Seahawks would have played better, but they defeated the Seahawks 28-12, to and the Eagles came from behind uh, to beat uh, the New York Giants on Monday night 23-17. to Now we need to move into uh, next week's games. Uh, everybody needs to get their pens and pencils out. George, we're going to start with the Thursday night game. Uh, the New York Jets at Baltimore. Uh, Baltimore coming off a big win against the Buffalo Bills. Take Baltimore. Baltimore. Uh, Jamal Adams is, is look like he's going to be ruled out. Of that. He's not going to be able to play. Jam- Jamal Adams, the heart and soul of that Jets defense. Uh, in that secondary, they're going to be able to uh, – the, the uh, Ravens going to take advantage of him not being there and be able to uh, blow it, probably beat them by 10 points or more. Tampa at Detroit. Ooh. Tampa's on the roll right now. Detroit is not. Take Tampa in that game uh, coming up. Tampa uh, should cover that. Philly at Washington. Big game for Philly. 
I don't know what to think of them. They 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 play so they now they're another team that plays down to their competition. They don't they they they, they waited around. They kept the Giants in that game uh, Monday night. I thought the Giants might pull it out, and uh, I think you're gonna see the same thing Sunday. Watch uh, Washington will hang around, and you'll see uh, Philly. I, I I have enough uh, faith in them this week that Philly will pull it out and win that one. Chicago at Green Bay. Oh, my goodness. Oh, if I might have some snow at this game, should be an interesting contest <laughs> once again. But I think the Packers, and keep in mind the Bills' ex-defense, uh, Mike Patton, he's doing a fantastic job with that defense. And their defense is sturdy. They're hitting people. They're playing, they're playing fast. They're playing physical. Take the Packers because now Trubisky. Watch Trubisky come back from those three touchdowns, and he probably won't throw one touchdown in the game. He'll probably turn the ball over a few times up there at Lambeau Field. New England at Cincinnati. New England, well, New England uh, will cover this one. New England uh, will, uh, enough said, New England will take care of Cincinnati. Tennessee at Houston, big game. Oh, oh wow, that's a big one right there. Uh, boy, that's a big one there. Tennessee, uh, I, I'm looking at Tennessee uh, uh, beating the Texans because the Texans, uh, they play each other tough. It's a divisional game. And keep in mind, Tennessee wins this game. Buffalo loses. They'll be tied with Buffalo. Buffalo still has their upper hand because they beat them, but then Buffalo plays New England the following week. If Tennessee wins out, Tennessee, Tennessee will take over Buffalo's position for the playoffs. Right. Yep, they sure would. All right, Seattle at Carolina. Seattle, uh, Carolina then, then, then busted in. Uh, I don't think uh, our guy Perry Fuel got those guys on the same page. Uh, so those guys running for the bus and uh, they ready to head home and, and do something uh, in the at home in the winter season and get ready for OTAs. Uh, see, take Seattle on this one. Denver at Kansas City. Uh, this would be another physical contest. Denver's playing much better. Uh, look for KC to win this one. And when, when, and uh, the thing I'll be look at this game is how long will Mahomes stay in the game? He has a bruised hand. We already know about his knee, having trouble with that knee. Uh, he's beat up. You can't see. You're going to have to think about that, not playing him pretty soon in, the, in these next couple of games. So, but uh, they need this game Sunday. Uh, I think uh, Kansas City will defeat the Denver Broncos. Miami at the New York Giants. Oh, that's the double one. Uh, Miami's going to play tough, but I think the Giants will pull this one out. All right, Jacksonville at Oakland. It's the last game ever to, ever to be played at the stadium at Alameda County Coliseum. A lot of fond memories. I have a lot of great memories of watching games there. Ben Davison and Otis Taylor, all the great players. Uh, Phil Vipiano, uh, Willie Brown, seeing all the great Raiders play. I'm sure a lot of those guys who are living will come back to the event uh, this Sunday because they're having a big thing out there. Uh, take the Raiders uh, for sentimental value. The Raiders will win this last, last game ever played at the Coliseum. Cleveland at Arizona. Cleveland at Arizona. That should be an interesting contest. I would not be surprised. I'll take. I'll go with the underdog. I'll take Arizona this week. Cleveland just. It's something about Baker Mayfield. He's very cocky, and he's not. He's not producing. He's doing a lot of talking. Got that price. Every time you turn the TV on, he's on a TV commercial. But he's not doing it on the football field. I, I think uh, I could take the upset with Arizona. All right. Uh, we have Atlanta at San Francisco. Atlanta at San Francisco take the 49ers. They are losing uh, Richard Sherman for a few weeks. That's going to hurt them. They lost their center, too. They lost a couple guys in that game down there in New Orleans and where they came back in that. So they have they dinged up pretty good, but take San Francisco in, in this contest. we got to move quickly. The Rams at Dallas. Rams at Dallas. Take the Rams. Dallas, I think they done packed it up. They, they running for the – their defensive guys are running for the bus. Minnesota at the L.A. Chargers. Oh, my God. The Chargers drew a tough schedule this year. Uh, Minnesota out there at the Chargers will be a very good game. I look for Minnesota to win it in the end. All right. We have Indianapolis at New Orleans. Indianapolis at New Orleans should be a good game, uh, but I think New Orleans has enough. And, and, and if, you, uh, uh, if you're betting this game, take the over again because I think uh, New Orleans' defense is suspect. Without Marcus Lattimore out there right now being injured, take the over in this contest. All right. This is the game right here for the hometown people. Buffalo travels to Pittsburgh on Sunday night football. Oh, back on, back on that. 
TV once again. Uh, once again, take a look at the Bills going out there to play hard against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. That's very good. The Bills defense is very good. This defense is better than the Ravens defense. Their secondary is, is with Micah Fitzpatrick and Joe Hayden. I think uh, J J J J uh, Allen is just a, he's a deer in the headlights. They're going to throw things at him that he didn't see last week against Baltimore, and he's definitely not going to see him this week. Take the Steelers romping all over the Bills, 24, 24 to 10. Steelers are blowed the bills out this week all right the rad man has called for a Steeler beatdown of the buffalo bills in pittsburgh also too there's a uh, these people on social media saying that there's a lot of bills fans going to the game i don't care how many bills fans are going to the game you are not and i repeat you are not taking over heinz field it's not going would you tell them george it's not oh, going to no. happen who said that? They, they actually said, somebody actually said something that's ridiculous yeah. in that. They got one of the best followings in the entire league. They took over the Arizona Stadium. I mean, it looked like right. it was it was 90% Steeler fans with their pom-poms out there in Arizona, and they definitely going to be at home. And uh, you go up there with that Bills jersey talking stuff, you're going to be, hey, you're going to be some fisticuffs up in the stands, too. <laughs> you go out there talking that nonsense that you be talking when you go to these other stadiums. You, you ain't going to be able to talk that and walk out of there without throwing some punches uh, at, at the, at the uh, stadium there last minute George Mike Tomlin coach of the year what do you think I think he I think he's I think this is a great coaching job with everything this guy's been through this year to me he's my coach of the year Definitely. He's limited the guy's throwing to, to Devlin. They call him the duck guy because he's a duck caller, the quarterback. He's done great jobs with that offense, and he's had three or four, uh, five different running backs. They just He just keeps it coming, keeps it simple, doesn't allow the guys to stay in their lane, do what they have to do. He coach them up. And that quarterback, what he does is he has a touch. He he gets the ball over the defender and gets the ball to drop in something that John, uh, Josh Allen. And we really, you could almost argue this guy is better than Josh Allen because Josh Allen can't complete the deep ball. This guy can. Right, absolutely. All right, thanks, George Radney, the rad man. Uh, this is our portion of Pro Talk here with the Mighty Over with George Radney. He is our NFL insider. Make sure you tune in to us on 105.5 to beat every Saturday morning at 7 a.m. for Pro Talk Plus. That's all for us here on Pro Talk with the Mighty Over.